You are listening to Practical and Woo by Mindset and Manifest. My name is Eden, and I invite you to embark on a journey with me to explore the practical and spiritual edges of the unknown for the purpose of allowing you to embody and empower yourself uniquely as you are and to intentionally create and live a life of freedom and fulfillment. Each week, I'm going to discuss topics such as energetics, reality creation, manifestation, astrology, tarot, human design, and more to help empower you to live beyond perceived limitations and to practically design your life so it feels like absolute magic every step of the way. Let's dive in. Well, hello, magnificent soul. We are meeting again for another tarot series episode. Last time in episode 23, we explored the alluring and creative power of the magician. This week, we are diving into an archetype that is equally alluring, equally magical, equally important. We are plunging into the sacred realm of the High Priestess where the magician offered us a perspective into solar creative energy. The high priestess is his equal opposite. She offers us a glimpse into the veiled lunar shadows cast by the light of the known and seen. In his book, The Definitive Tarot, Bill Butler offers the reader a glimpse into the high priestess's origin story and how she came to be seated amongst the 22 trump cards of the major arcana. He cites the story of a woman who was once elected pope. Her gender concealed, Pope Joan reached the pinnacle of the church only to die in childbirth during an Easter celebration. Where Pope Joan is claimed likely to be a legend, there was another figurehead who did assume such a position. Papes Maifreda Visconti. Now, if you've been listening along with Practical and Woo or have caught up on all of the episodes, you may recall the surname Visconti from episode 16. The Visconti family of Milan are thought to be the original commissioners of what has become the traditional deck for tarot divination. Over 150 years prior to that commission, Maifreda Visconti was elected to be the first female pope, the papess. She was sentenced to death by the church for her heresy, a way to prevent a prophecy orated by a group called the Gugliamites who believed that in 1300 AD there would be a new age where women would claim the role of pope. The drama and pathos of these two stories, both fact and fiction, color undulating power that lives within the feminine archetype. For clarity's sake, I would like to offer that when I mention gendered terms here, I am speaking in an energetic sense. Understanding energetics in a dichotomy can be helpful when venturing to find balance within. Each person in the world carries both, and each ebb and flow within us all are held in different quantities at different times for different purposes. It also feels important to add that the high priestess sitting proudly in her throne is a testament to the power that has been purposely concealed by religions and religious figureheads who have been power-hungry through generations and greedy to wield absolute power. Yet, I am excited to say that the High Priestess lives on proudly in her archetypal role, inviting initiates to dive deep into the realm of her mystery. The High Priestess signifies inner wisdom at the deepest level. To recap the journey of our hero thus far, the fool has leapt off the cliff encouraged by an instinct to play holy in authenticity with an optimistic spirit and unwavering sense of potential. The fool has met the magician 
from whom the gift of creation was influenced. The fool received the lesson that anything and everything is within the realm of possibility, that there was so much more to be explored, affirmation that the leap was worth taking. The fool has now wandered into the domain of the high priestess and is met with her elegance and her grace. She sits confidently, self-assured. She is bestowed with a crown upon her head and a scroll in her lap. You can make out the letters T-O-R-A, Torah, an ancient text of religion, which in this depiction also denotes an anagram for tarot, a tool used for spiritual mysticism and divination. The fool looks around and there are two pillars prominently situated, holding sturdy the foundation of the sacred temple. One is marked with B and the other J, a reference to the pillars Boaz and Yakin found in the Temple of Solomon. Boaz means strength or swiftness, and Yakin means confidence. In our society's collective culture, there has been a narrative dispersed that renders the qualities of feminine energy demure and passive to the point that the terms referencing such energy are deemed to be profane insults denoting weakness and not enoughness. You're a sissy, a playground bully might taunt, and yet the word sissy is a pejorative term derived from the word sister. There are many other terms that take on this form, and yet many may be too explicit for me to utter here. I want to ensure that this forum remains as safe and accessible as possible. Though the contemplation of pejorative terms is nevertheless important, particularly when it comes to the archetype of the high priestess, because it highlights the dynamic nature of the feminine archetype that we so often forget and repress. There is power here, power to be explored contemplated, and accessed, and the clue of the kind of power mastered by the high priestess lays beyond the pomegranate-covered veil that sits behind her throne. For those of you who want to follow along with the imagery, I am referencing the traditional tarot depictions discoverable on the Smith Waite or Rider Waite tarot decks. If you notice, the veil does not go edge to edge, and the recipient of the High Priestess card can receive a glimpse of what lays beyond. Water, hills, and sky. In her book, 78 Degrees of Wisdom, Rachel Pollock describes the features of the mysteries behind the veil. She says, The pool signifies the unconscious and the truth hidden there. The water is motionless, the secrets in its darkest depths hidden under a smooth surface. For most of us, at most times, the turbulent unconscious remains hidden under a placid layer of consciousness. We cannot enter the temple because we do not know how to go into ourselves Therefore, we must travel through the trumps until we reach the star and the moon, where we can finally stir up the waters and return with the wisdom to the conscious light of the sun. For your reference, the star and moon cards are 17th and 18th in the Major Arcana. Here we are, standing at the third card, Facing the initiate tricks of mysteries, the unknown, and the deep unconscious. Are you ready to open yourself to a continued journey of self-discovery? Are you ready to dive in? Until next time.